Well, hey, Mark, how you doing? <laughs> Good, Steve. How are hey, you? Hey, Mark, how you doing? I'm great. Hey, Mark, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Hey, Mark, how you doing? 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 That was my life for about 50, well, 40 years or so. Really? If you don't know what that is, man, that's obsessive compulsive disorder. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, I'm going to get dressed while I'm talking. I'm not talking about, you know, you got to go back and check and make sure that the stove is turned off or the door. I'm talking about like being stuck under your bed, you know, for four hours saying something over and over again while horrific images are going in your head and you have to counter each one of those things that goes in your head with something positive. So, anyway. OCD kicked in for you at what, what age? I was, you know, the first OCD attack that I actually had, I was five years old and I mean, somebody, there was somebody that uh, their house had caught on fire, okay, and we were, we were talking about it, my parents, my mom, and my brothers and sister, and uh, it scared me, and before I went to bed, I kept saying to my mother, is our house going to catch on fire, I was worried about it, and then before I went to sleep, I, 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 it's over and over again, I said, our house isn't going to catch on fire, 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 over and over again, then I just fell asleep, and then I just kind of, that kind of faded out, and I forgot about it, and then the OCD came back when I was probably around the fourth grade, I think it was. And it started out with, uh, I mean, I went to take a glass of water off the table to touch it. And when I touched the glass, for some reason, I could not pick it up and drink out. It had something to do with like odd and even numbers. Like the first time was an odd number, which would make you odd, something of that sort. So anyway, I, uh, I touched the glass again before I could drink it. And then, uh, and then after that, it would, it, it like increased. I'd be doing that all the time whenever we, we sat down for dinner. And Steve would always have to touch the glass one time before picking it up. And pretty soon my brothers were like, what the, what the hell are you doing? And then from there it increased to where I would be touching it multiple times before I did. So anyway, uh, and from there it just got, it just got, it increased. It wasn't, it, and then, and then, and then I, I developed over a period of time the system where like certain numbers, I remember for a while like odd numbers were always no good. And then like the number 13 was always like a, the bad luck number. So I always had to avoid 13 or anything related to 13, like three. And so then it became like, I'm doing an example. Like if I say I've picked up this shoe, okay. See, I pick it up. See, so what would happen then is like negative thoughts would come in, okay. And uh, I would have to counter those, and it could be anything. I would have to counter those with a positive thought. It could, it could be any number of things. Uh, it could be something like, uh, I don't know, uh, you're not gonna, you're not gonna uh, pass this, you know, the seventh grade or something. It could go in your head. So say, say I went to pick up my shoe, okay, and it went, uh, you're not gonna pass the seventh grade. Okay, then I'm gonna have to pick it up again and say to myself, I will pass the second grade. Okay, now what happens is you've got, that I picked it up the first time, okay, so then I counter it with the second, but that's no good because the first time is still stronger because it was the first time you did it. So you'd have to do it a third time. I'll pass seventh grade. Okay, now you're at two to one, two good to one bad, which is okay, but you still got the number three in there now, which is like 13, so you gotta, I'll get rid of that, so. I'll go to I'll pass and go to the seventh grade. You say it a third time. Okay, now you got three good to one bad, which is four, which is okay, but you still got the three in there, so that's not good. So you gotta do it again. I'm gonna pass and you know go to the seventh grade. Okay, so now you've done it four times to one, which is good. And in the earlier stages, I could walk away with that. It would be okay. You'd be done with it. But what started happening was by the time I got to the fourth one, that bad uh, thought would come back in. It wasn't even really like a thought. It wasn't even really like a thought. It was like, uh, it's almost like you're saying it yourself. Like, like I hear myself say, like I'm saying it and I'm kind of like, like countering that with, no, that's not, I'm going to graduate. I'm going to go to the seventh grade, you know, or whatever. And, but what would happen is that that bad thought would come in again. So then you have to start the whole process all over again. Okay. And it always stayed in the, in the category of, you could never, it always was like, the counting was always one, two, one, two, which would be four, then one, two, one, two, 
which would be four more, which is eight. Then you'd start again, one, two, one, two, which is four again, and so on, and four more is eight. And then when it got to 16, you would stop and you'd start it over again, one, two, one, two. You never counted like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It was never like that. It was always in, you know, keeping with one, two, one, two, one, two, four to eight to 16, then you'd start over. Always, awesome. always avoiding the number 13. That sounds exhausting. Oh yeah, and, you, and, this sound, and that sounds like messed up, but that's like nothing to what it actually ended up turning into. And I always thought that, you know, this is something stupid, ridiculous. I'll stop doing this in a couple of years. I'll stop, and I and it didn't stop. It kept getting, uh, kept getting worse. Well, anyway, I went through like like I had a, and it started to affect my life more. Like I would miss out on things. Like you, would, like if you got out of bed in the morning, the first thing when your foot touched the floor, you had to have the right thought. Okay, if you did, you'd have to get back in bed, touch the floor again, and, and, and start over. And again, it was always in that same sequence. It was never just once. It was always in that same sequence of one, two, one, two, four. You had to, you had to, you had to avoid the number three and, and stay in that zone. And there was different things, like there were times where like, there was a thing for a while where I was always like spitting because I felt like there was something like a contaminant or something in my mouth. I'd like keep spitting it out. I would walk and I have to touch the floor again, you know, all those kind of things. I had a paper out, which I was very good at too. You're basically self-employed with a paper out. You buy your papers and resell them. I made really good money, I was a very good business, man. I was just a young kid, I was in the sixth grade. And, but then, in, Toward the end of my route, I started to have the thing where I would have to, I would put the paper in someone's door and then I'd go do two more houses and then I'd have to go all the way back to the other door knowing that I put the paper in there and still check. So, so a paper route that used to take me maybe 45 minutes an hour would take like two hours, okay? And so it started affecting me, you know, more and more like that. Uh, and again, at this point, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, you know, the end of the world wasn't devastating. It was always something I thought, well, you know, I'm going to, I'll be able to beat this thing. I'm going to, you know, in a couple of years, I'll look back at this and laugh at it. I always thought that. And one of the, uh, I mean, it wasn't, it was annoying at times. You know, it was a real, you know, a problem. Okay, but it didn't start to really get bad until like I started going in toward, like toward my high school year. So I started getting, that's when, now I had a kind of like a remission, like in the eighth grade where it went down and my grades went straight up. I was like getting A's now, you know what I mean? It was like, I had all these plans. Like I was planning on, uh, I grew up in Pennsylvania. I was planning on going to Penn State. You know, I was either gonna probably major in law, probably get into politics, you know, I had it all, had it all figured out. But then once I hit, hit high school, it got bad and it got ugly and it got really bad. Uh, oh, also, if you haven't noticed, uh, I'm a professional clown, you know. Uh, how fitting is that though? You know, you, you always figure like the clown, what's behind that painted smile? Yeah, it's a really a crazy person. Uh, anyway, uh, I had this one incident happen with an OCD attack. Uh, this was going toward, like I was going into the ninth grade, it was in the summer. And uh, there was this friend of mine and a friend of theirs was like, I had a cop that was a friend, they had this like police camp thing, okay? And we were, uh, you know, he asked if I wanted to do it. I said, yeah, man, I'll go. What do I care? And when we went to take this physical right now, and this is, this is a part of me. Okay, I, I grew, okay, where I grew up, I grew up, at, like, I grew up in a small town, Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, but I was in a, we were the, we were like, would be the rich kids in that area. It was a private neighborhood, you know, a pool, tennis court, all that kind of stuff. So we were, we were wealthy kids in that small community. Not wealthy like you'd see in L.A., but wealthy. Uh, but anyway, we went to this physical thing and all the kids there were like, you could tell most of these kids were like dirt poor. And I hate to admit it, but the way we were brought up, you know, we were to consider that we were better than these people. You know, it was horrible. They, you know, I look at that now. And I developed this fear that if I went to this camp, I would be like these kids. You know what I mean? And so I didn't want to go at all. And at this time, my parents were getting divorced. My mother was seeing this asshole who I hate to this very day. She married and he was over. And I didn't want to go. My mother's like insisting that I go. And I developed, I was, I was literally terrified that if I went to this thing, I would end up like these kids. I mean, I really believed that. It was like horrible. So anyway, I had this major attack and I'm like, it, it was like, it was an OCD thing then, but not quite like with the rituals yet, but it was definitely an OCD thing. Okay, but anyway, that was like a, it was like, it turned out to be a big like, I don't know, I was yelling and screaming and crying. It was like freaking ridiculous, you know what I mean? Anyway, anyway, I went to the thing and then once confronted with the people, I still had like the OCD attacks and I'd have to say over and over again, I'll be successful, I'll be successful, I'll be successful, I'll be successful. I was, that's kind of why I had to keep saying that. But once I got there and confronted it, you know, I, I, was, I was okay. But anyway, that was like the start of it really getting bad. But the first time that I had an OCD attack that I was really scared, I mean, actually scared me, was I just got back from the beach and my friends and I were riding home on our bikes and uh, 
I was I, uh, football was really big where I came from. This town in Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania was really big in football back in those days, you know, with Alec Quippen. It was really like, you know. And I went to one of the best football schools in the state, you know. We were like ranked second in the state my junior year. We were like one of the best schools in the state, a small school, though. And so football was huge at my school. It was like the big thing. So it was really important to me, you know, to start on the football team. And I played in eighth grade. I started out a pretty good I had a really good season. And I was like an up-and-comer. And, and uh, anyway, we're riding our bikes back, and uh, my friend was in front of me. And uh, all of a sudden, the thought went in my head, you're not going to start on the football team. And it, like, I was like, I'm going to start on the football team. I'm going to start on the football team. I'm going to start on the football team. And I'm saying this. I'm going to start on the football team. But then the bad one kept coming at me, not going to start. I'm going to start on the football team. I'm going to start on the football team. I'm gonna start. And, he just kept, and, I, and I couldn't catch up. I couldn't say it enough times to catch up to the negative one. And then it scared the shit out of me. So it's like your negative thoughts are fighting against your... Yeah. And it kept... It's every time I said, I'm going to start, the other one would slide in your there. Affirmations. And then... And I couldn't catch up to... Other times it would happen, but I could catch up to it pretty quick. This time I didn't. And then finally when I caught up to it, and I was like, oh shit. I was like, dude. I was like, you better stop this. You better knock this off because this is getting out of control now. You better just stop doing this. Okay. And... Uh, and from there, it just started getting out of control. Now, I did have a bit of a, like during the season, I had a bit of a remission, I guess. It wasn't so bad. Uh, and I had a good season, too. I started and I kicked ass, man. I was like an up and coming, you know, star on the football team. You know, the head coach knew me. I was, I was going to be one of the big, big guys, you know. And, uh, and wrestling season came around. And OCD really messes up wrestling because wrestling's like 90% of your head once you step on the mat. And if your head ain't together, you know, you're going to have some problems. All right, so anyway, the OCD attack started getting worse and worse, okay? And now, some really scary shit started coming in my head that didn't, that didn't happen before. Thoughts of, like, doing harm to other people started entering the, entering the picture, like, you know, killing your family or something, things that would really, ter really terrified me. And I had to counter those with, like, say, say a thought went in my head, you know, you're going to kill your sister. I would have to say, I'll save my sister's life, I'll save my sister's life, I'll save my sister's life, okay? And, and those started coming more and more, and they were starting to really, like, get bad. Like, I was starting to really, and, you, and I never, in my, it, it's crazy because you know you're not going to kill your sister. You, you know, but for some reason, it's like the fear is so strong. It's like you have to say that. If, if I'm not taking, it's like I'm not going to take any chances. I got to keep saying this shit until I get it caught up. Is it, is it because you love your sister so much? that? It, no, it, no, it could be anybody, actually. That's part, that's part of it. But it could be my sister, my brother, and it could be a guy on the street. Anybody this could come in, you know. It did, it did, no, it really didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, I mean, maybe a little, but not really. It could just be anybody. Uh, and you would have to, you'd have to counter it. All right, so you'd have those thoughts, okay? And you would have to counter them by saying the positive thought. And if you didn't, then you would go and, like, kill this person or something. Now, you know that that's ridiculous. You know, and, and, you, and you're constantly in a battle with yourself saying, this is stupid. It's ridiculous. You know that. You know it makes no sense. You know that. Why am I saying this, okay? And, th and then you're like, and then you think, am I crazy? And then you think you're crazy. That's even worse because, oh, my God, what if I'm crazy? You know, and you know it makes no sense. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. Saying this is not going to change a thing, okay? But... The fear is so strong, you have to keep saying it. Now, I've been told from books I've read that basically when you have OCD, basically, like, say you go to pick something up, okay? Your serotonin moves this way, you pick it up. After you've picked it up, completed the task, the serotonin moves back that way. Task completed, you're done. With OCD, the serotonin doesn't move back. It stays there. So you're compelled to do it over and over again. Now, that, I, I, I've read up on that. Now, as far as the horrific thoughts that are coming in there, with that, I don't know, I don't know where those come from. But anyway... Uh, I started having really bad attacks. And one of the worst attacks I ever had was, okay, this was during, this was 1977. I don't know if you're familiar with this. There's the blizzard of 77. Like, like Buffalo was like, uh, you know, it was like for like, I don't know, like a week and a half or something, it like snowed constantly. You know, they had to bring the National Guard into Buffalo. And we were in Erie. Erie's like between Buffalo and Cleveland and then I think Pittsburgh south of there. But we got hit with the snow too. We were out of school for like a month. Now, massive snowstorms. And, uh, this is one morning, okay, I got up out of bed. Somehow I made it out. Now it was getting to the point where it was hard to get out of bed because I'm doing that thing where I got to have the right thought again. And I was standing, I went and looked out the window, you know, at the snow, and it's everywhere. And, and the thought goes in my head, I'm going to go downstairs and murder my family, okay? And it scares me so right away, you know, I'm going to save my family's life. And then it comes back, I'm going to save my family's life. I'm going to save my family's life. And, and, I, and I kept saying, trying to, but the bad thought just kept coming in and coming in. And the more that it comes at you, 
the more stressful it is. And the more stressful it is, the more the OCD kicks in even more. Before long, you're, you're, I'm terrified, man. I'm like, next thing I know, I'm stuck by that window. I've actually, I wrote a book about this, and that's one of the chapters is uh, stuck by the window on a snow day. And before long, I'm like terrified. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to murder everybody. And I'm going to go down. I think actually my sister and I were the only ones there, but I think I'm going to go down and murder her. Or and... And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm saying it over. I'm, I'm gonna save my, I'm gonna save my feelings. I'm gonna save my feelings. I'm gonna save my feelings. But the, it just kept coming, and I couldn't catch up. I was terrified, man. Before long, I was fucking crying. Tears were pouring down me because I was terrified. And my sister comes down the hall and sees me, and she's like, and she knew I was having things were fucked up then. The people were noticing now, and she was just like, it's like Steve, you got to get some help, man. Just walk away. You got to do something. She didn't know what to do. Anyway. I finally got it under control, and it was weird. Like when you had a bad attack like that, it was like if somebody in your family died or something. Like somebody you, close to you died. That's how you felt after you, it was that strong. After you finally got it under control, but anyway, went downstairs, and I'm still pretty fucked up. And she's like, "Steve, just go downstairs, just lift weights, do something, keep your mind off." And nobody knew what was wrong with that. Was another thing that was fucked up because back then nobody knew what OCD was. Like somebody gets OCD now, they know. They, nobody knew what OCD was then. It wasn't until like the '80s that they fucking and you thought you're the only person in the whole world that did this shit. Nobody else. You did it. It was all you. And so you're like fucking on your own, man. There was no help whatsoever. So anyway, the attacks kept getting worse and worse. I had an attack once during a wrestling match when I was sitting. After, before I wrestled, I was like doing something like with my hand and people saw like really embarrassing, which was bad. But at the time I was so fucked up, I really didn't think about it. But anyway, so after a while, my parents kind of were like, okay, they fought, they weren't doing, because they were, they were busy fighting over their fucking divorce and what these fucking crazy people they're with. You know, they were this like, and the thing was, you know, the only thing that keeps me sane, I think, today is when I was a little kid, like little, I had a great childhood. I mean, I had everything, man. Good, loving parents, the pool, the house, the, you know, I mean, it was like the American dream. And I, that's the only thing that keeps me sane today. All right, now, like I said, it was getting really bad at this point. And my cousin John was over staying with He was going to school in Gannon then. He's a really cool guy. And, uh, and the whole household's falling apart now. Everything's a wreck. It's my sister and me with my dad. My brothers went with my mother and my stepfather. And we got this crazy bitch in our house. And anyway, uh, there was a show on television called Violence in America. Now, when I was younger, I loved that show. I used to love 60 Minutes. I was, like, really into, like, education when I was a kid. I was, like, a m brilliant debater. Even as a little kid, I used to, like, do these debates in school and bury people. And the show Violence in America comes on. And it's showing me, like, these serial killers. And they're talking about horrific things they're doing. And obviously with OCD, now I'm freaked out. Okay, it's really bothering me. My dad noticed it was bothering me during, while I was watching it. And he was saying, maybe you should just go up and back. But, I, but then I had to keep watching it because the next part was going to be about like little league kids playing little league football in the inner city and the violence there. But like for some weird reason, that was okay. Okay, so I had to watch that to offset like, you know, Charles Manson and these sick fucks. You know what I mean? It's like violence in football was okay. You know, you could do that. That was, it was just, it's just, that's how OCD is. It makes no goddamn sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. Okay, anyway, uh, so I'm watching this show and it's, you know, it's like really getting to me. And I'm have, obviously I'm having OCD attacks. Well, anyway, I finally go up to bed and I'm laying in bed. And of course, you're going to be a killer, you're going to be a murderer, you're going to be just like those guys. And I kept saying to myself, I'm going to say people laugh, say people laugh, say people I had to keep saying it over and over again. And then, like, images started showing. Like, like I l literally saw, like, Charles Manson right in front of me looking at me. You know, like, look, and I'm, like, fucking terrified. Then I would have to think of, like, sports characters, you know, Jack Lambert or, you know, Joe Green or whatever, to offset the image of this guy over and over while I'm saying this. And my cousin John finally came up. And like he yelled at me, like, be quiet, because he was trying to sleep. I was and then I had to say it to myself real quiet over and over and over again. And, and all, I didn't sleep all night. It's in rituals all fucking night. Fucked up, I'm terrified I'm going to be a mass murderer, whatever. So I go to school the next day. I had an algebra test. At that time, I think I had a B in algebra. Because math was usually pretty easy for me. And I could ace this test. This was a turning point in my life. This, this was when it, this was the point where it all fell apart. I mean, I'm taking the test. And I'm so fucked up with the OCD and the rituals and everything, I couldn't even take the test. I got an F. I failed it. And after that, all my grades, all Fs. F failed like everything. Because after that, that, that's when OCD took over. Now, one of, the, one of the worst things is that it really affected me by was, okay, first of all, you couldn't pay attention in class. Because while I'm sitting in class 
and the teacher's giving a lecture, I'm saying rituals over and over again in my head. You know, I'm into this. I'm, you know, and it could be for anything. There's literally, it could be a fear of being gay, fear of uh, being unsuccessful, fear of, you know, not starting on the football team, fear of, uh, it could be any number of things. You have to say it over and over and over again. So I'm not able to pay attention to what's going on in class anyway. Reading, I couldn't fucking read for shit. To this day, I can't read. Now, let me explain this to you. When I say that I can't read, okay, a paraplegic knows how to walk, but he can't walk. It's the same thing. Okay, when I would go to read a book, okay, say I'm reading the book, you know, the man walked through the store and saw a dead dog. Okay, when I saw the word dead, obviously, I would have to say live, 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 over and over again to catch it up or else somebody would die close to me. Okay, not only that, I would have to go back in that book and find the word live to offset where I read, saw dead. And if I didn't find it, I'd have to go to another book, okay, and find the word live, okay? Now, obviously, so I couldn't fucking read. Not only that, okay, with the, re and that can happen all through when you're reading. Any, any word could trigger an attack, okay? And what happened was, because of that, over and over again that happening, like most people, you just pick something up, you just read it, you don't think twice about it, you just look, you, I can't do that. When I go to read something, my brain automatically, to this day, stops. Okay, you gotta have the right thought before you start reading, gotta see the right color, blah, 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 everything has to be just right before you can start reading. So automatically my brain stops, okay, for me from reading. So even to this day, I can't read, but let me put it this way, I can read in the sense that Sometimes, I've, I've read many books, and you may say, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, I can, like, if, I, let me give you an example here. You could have me write down a paragraph, and then ask me to read that same paragraph that I just wrote. I wouldn't be able to read it. You'd be like, what do you mean you can't read it? You wrote the thing. How can you not read it when you just wrote it? And I wouldn't, because my brain puts a stop. Now, in saying that, I've read hundreds of history books and things, and then when I say that I've read those, if I pick up a book on my casual, on my own, I can start, I'll start to, I can read it. I'll be able to read the book. Now I may get, I will get stuck from time to time while I'm reading, stop, have some OCD attack, then continue. So I can't read in that sense. But when I say I can't read, like if somebody just hands me something, like if you hand me something right now and say, oh, could you read this? It's like, it stops me. That's, that's kind of what I'm saying. And you would think, and I, and I read, Christ, I don't know, hundreds of books trying to beat this. And you would think that the more you read, that that would change. It's the opposite of that. Because if I haven't read anything in a long time, it's easier to pick something up and start reading. When you read all a lot, then it just increases. It's, I, again, it's, it's OCD and it's, uh, it's, it's crazy fucking bullshit. Anyway, now, by this point, my parents are like, okay, something's fucked up with this guy. We need some help. Now, my mother, okay... I show up at her house one day for dinner, and then all of a sudden, now, now and the first one, now I'm terrified of going to a psychiatrist because the next is going to confirm that I'm crazy. I'd seen the movie One Flew Over Cuckoo's Nest, and I'm thinking if people find out what I'm really doing, I'm going to get a fucking lobotomy or something. So you don't want anybody to know the truth that you're fucking nuts. And I'm telling myself I'm not crazy. That probably was, that was one of the attacks too. I'm not crazy. I probably said that too. I don't know. I'm sure I did. But anyway, so she, she says, "Oh, we're going." I'm like, "Going what? Where?" And she was like, going to take me to some psychologist. I was like. Again, I'm freaking out. I'm crying. I'm like, oh, blah, 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 blah. I tried. If I would have gotten in touch with my dad, he would have said, fuck them, man. I'll go run. Get away. I'll come pick you up. Because my dad was like, you know, we were tight. He would have he fucking came. You know, fuck them. Anyway, my sister was coming to ease the thing. She really needed to go. But she had some issues, too. But I'm not going to get into that. Uh, hers were caused by fucking other people. But anyway, uh, so I go to the shrink. and I, My sister, when I talk about her, she says she remembers me telling him about it. But I don't remember telling this guy anything about it, really. So anyway, that just didn't work at all. I never went back. Then I'm still fucked up. So my dad then, now it's his turn to send me to a psychiatrist, okay? So, but my dad, he's, he's up front about it. You know, he's, he's not playing games. He's like, no, you're going at this time. We're getting, no, no bullshit, no surprises, no fucking nothing. And that's the way it is. I don't want to, well, too fucking bad you don't want to go. You're fucking going, you know, and, and with, which is better. Okay, and of course I was pissed off and mad about it, but I'm not, it wasn't like a, like a, a thing that was just thrown at me. Thin. Now, I will say this for my mother. It was in her, she did have it in her heart to help me, okay? So I can't, you know what I mean? She mooned about it the wrong way, but she did, it was in her heart. She wanted to help me. But anyway, so now, this is really fucked up. All right, now remember, nobody knew shit about OCD back then. It wasn't like today. So I go into this like, now here we, here we go, my whole life has been fucking destroyed. Here I was, this really, I was, oh yeah, I was really good looking too. You may not believe it now, but when I was younger, that's one thing I did have. I was like, fucking, I was really handsome. And I was extremely popular, okay? And uh, anyway, so I go, I had everything in the world going for me, man. I was like, I, Chris, I could have been a senator today. You know what I mean? It's like, and then this fucking stupid bullshit where I got to say things over and over again is destroying my whole fucking life. Everything's being destroyed. It's affecting me in sports. It's affecting me in my education. It's affecting me in, my social life, it's, it's, it's fucking me up in, in, in every aspect of my life, okay? 
and, and I go to, and, and because I got to keep, because every time I think of something, something, a bad thought, I got to say a good thought to counter it. This is what's fucking just destroying my life. So I talk to this, what does this fucking shrink say to me? He says to me, you know, see, everybody had thought it was like, I'm upset about the divorce or some bullshit. I fucking give a fuck about the divorce. Well, maybe I did. I don't know. But anyway, uh, this guy, the psychiatrist says to me, you know, what we could do, Steve, is we can teach you how to think of a good thought when you have a bad thought. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like in tears. I'm like... That's the fucking problem, and you're telling me to fucking, what, is, what the fuck, I'm here. I'm here because of this. And this is what the guy, I'm like, at that point, I knew, you know, it's over. I was like, okay, you know what, man? You're on your own, dude. Nobody's going to help you. Nobody can help you. Nobody's ever going to get this. You're just fucked. There's nothing you can do. So I decided, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to beat this thing one way or the other. I, and I always said that all through this thing. I always would determine one day I'm going to overcome this bullshit. I, 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 was, and I stayed at him. I said, I'm going to beat this thing on my own, my way. But in that meantime, I'm going to hide this. Nobody is going to know about this. I'm going to cover it up. And, go, and I did. And I did it ingeniously. Now, one of the ways I did that was, like, say I had to pick something up like this. Now, I could, if I physically picked it up over and over again, people could see that. So this ingenious plan was you touch it. Now I could slowly, slightly, like leave my arm like this and slowly put pressure on it and that would count as picking it up as a touch. And I could do that and people wouldn't notice. Okay, maybe they noticed a little, but not like picking it up over and over again. Those were little ingenious ways I came up with hiding it. Another thing, I had to explain why, 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 you know, why is he getting all that? So why is he failing his classes? They're gonna question that. What do I do? How do I counter that? Ah, what do I do? I, I decide that I'm gonna be one of those guys that doesn't give a fuck about school. You know, I don't care. I just want to party, drink, go to parties, you know, play sports. I don't care about school. I don't care at all about grades. And so I played that image. I played that part. And I played that part perfect. And people bought into it. They believed it. Okay. And it worked. I was fucking popular as hell. I was just like the party guy. You know, that was completely not me. I wasn't like that at all. I loved school. I loved the bitch. I loved education. I wanted nothing more than to be educated. But, I, but I'd rather do that than let people know that I was fucking crazy. Okay. And anyway, so I did it and it worked. I remember one time, like it worked because I remember my dad, he thought I was okay, that all this shit had gone away. And one day I just said, fuck it. And I had an attack and I didn't try to hide it. And he says, why are you doing this again? You were better. You were doing all right. And I just looked at him. And I was just like, you just don't know. You have no idea. You don't know. Because he didn't know. He didn't know I was hiding it. So anyway, I go through high school and again, but somehow by some miracle, I did graduate. But anyway, I'm going to get back into one of the darkest, and I, and I really was like questioning whether I should talk about this, because it's very disturbing, and uh, it's very difficult for me to talk about it, uh, but, I, but I figure if I'm going to be honest in this video, I'm going to bring it up, you know what I mean? It, it is, this is very difficult, I had to really think, are you really going to bring this up? But I'm going to bring it up, because I have to bring it up, because it, it's, it's very important. Okay, all right, so meanwhile, my stepmother moves in with us, right? She wasn't my stepmother at the time, they weren't married yet. And meanwhile, her sister moves in too, and my, her sister's like fucking with my sister all the time, which is bad. That was a, that's a whole other thing my poor sister went through. Now, my stepmother, this is one sick fucking bitch. She would, act, all right, so let me start with this. I think the first Christmas she was around, okay, like she bought me this 48-inch blacklight, which was really a nice gift. I was like, wow, that's cool. And it was like weird because it was like, I remember we were in the living room too, and we used to always open presents in the family room when we were a family, but now with some weird thing. I don't know. But anyway, we're in the living room, and, and after she gave it to me, I can remember who said it. They, somebody, they were saying, oh, give her a kiss, give her a kiss. I'm like, it's fucking weird. We never did that fucking shit. It was weird. And so I'm on my knees, and I go to kiss her, like, and she kisses me on the lips, and it didn't feel right. It wasn't like when your grandmother gives you a kiss. There was something different about this. Something kind of weird that I really didn't know what it was, but this wasn't a fucking regular kiss. Something just, something felt weird about this, okay? It just wasn't normal. Well, anyway, as time went by, this bitch, now my, I'm 14, my sister's 15. She starts telling us explicitly sexual things she's doing with my father. I mean, she's telling these kids, telling us this stuff. She, I mean, graphic details. She's talking about putting like, Hershey's chocolate syrup on my dad's cock and licking it off. She's telling a 14 and 15 year old kids this shit. Meanwhile, they're banging all the time we hear them. At first we were like, you know, our kids were listening. And then after a while it was like, we were like, we couldn't even sleep and like, we were like, shut up. She'd leave the door open so you could peek in and see her getting banged. This bitch was fucked up, man. Okay, so she's doing all that shit. And now meanwhile, she's always touching me. She's always like putting her own hands on me and touching my arms and my legs. 
all it. You know, it's just like, it's like, you know, this is like, you know, something's fucked up. It's a sexual thing happening here, man. That's what she's doing. And I don't get it. I don't see what she's doing. I don't see how she's pulling me into this shit, right? Because I'm a fucking young kid, man. I'm in the middle of fucking puberty. I'm 14. So meanwhile, let me do, you know, I'm just going to save and do the mix. I got it. Okay. So. And anyway, start, like, what I, like if she picked me up from football practice, she would say, oh, lay your head down on my lap. And she'd like have shorts on, my head would be on her lap, you know. And, and then right before we got, got to that, she'd oh, no, get up, get up, get up, get up now, get up now, because she didn't want anybody to see, because she knew what the fuck she was doing was fucking wrong. Okay, and it just kept going further and further. She'd bend over so I could like see her, her breasts, you know. She would expose herself. And it was like little by little, it was going more and more, and it was a sexual thing. I mean, I'm a fucking kid in puberty. My dick's getting hard by this. And at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to do this. I want nothing to do with my father's fucking wife for Christ. Like, I don't want anything to do with this fucking shit. Okay, but first, I could not stop it. I did not see what the fuck she was doing to me. And then one day, and it's going, it's getting out of control now. And then there's one day, my little brothers were over because my dad had them on the weekends or something, or it was maybe during the week, a couple weeks in the summer. And they were, my dad was downstairs making spaghetti, and my brothers, you could hear him. And I walked past their room, and she was laying on the bed. And for some reason, I walked in the room. And I laid down on the bed next to her. Next thing I know, we're like kissing passionately, and I'm like sucking on her tits. And it's like, and, and I'm saying to myself, wow, this is happening. No, Steve, this is wrong, man. You can't, this is wrong. This is going too far, man. You got to stop it. So I stop it, okay? And I was sitting on the edge of the bed. And I'm like, fucked up, man. And she comes over and she, and she looks at me. She looks at me in the eyes. And I was fucking terrified, man. I was fucking terrified. I was like, fuck, I was, I was literally frozen. I was like paralyzed. I knew she was going to do something fucked up that I did not want her to do. And I could not stop it. I was fucking paralyzed. I was just like terrified. And all of a sudden she pulled down my shorts and started sucking my dick. Next thing I knew, I saw fucking stars. I had orgasmed. And, and I, there was no pleasure in it whatsoever, nothing. It was nothing, it was just a horrible fucking experience. And I just sat there frozen in fucking fear immediately after it's over. As immediately after I came, the OCD whom came pounding in at me, of course. And she gets up and I hear her walk in the bathroom, spit out my fucking cum and rinse out her mouth. And I'm, and I'm still sitting there frozen, like I'm fucking frozen, man. I'm in fear, I'm terrified, I'm, I, I can't move, I'm still paralyzed. She's like, she says something to me like, I oh, please my man, and then you better get dressed, you know? And, and, and I, so I, so I pick up, pull up my shorts, and I go in the bathroom, and immediately, man, I'm, I'm washing my dick over and over and over and over and over, because now I'm contaminated, my whole body's contaminated. I gotta get, that was another thing I had, I didn't get into much, the contamination thing with OCD. I'd be washing my hands constantly until they bled, and all that was, that's a whole thing. So now I'm completely contaminated, right? And I got to get this contamination off me that she's now put on me. Okay, I'm completely contaminated. And I'm, I'm feeling so guilty. How could I have done this to my father? Oh my God, this man loves me. The only person in my life, how could I have done this to him? Oh my God, I'm, what kind of a horrible person am I? How could I do I was so guilty. I went downstairs then. I heard they called me down for dinner. I, I couldn't even look my father in the eyes. From that day on, things with my father had never been the same after that. Never again was it the same. And I, I couldn't, I, I was- Did he ever find out? Uh, well, this, this comes later. Uh, and so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just, I couldn't even look. It was terrible. So then we were all going to the pool. Like our pool was, you got, everybody had a key to the pool and clubhouse. You can go at night if you want. So we all went to the pool. And I couldn't go in the pool because if I jumped in the pool because I was contaminated, then the pool would become contaminated as well. As well as all my clothing were now contaminated. They would all have to be thrown out. Okay, and a big problem was I had my wrestling socks on, and you, if you started on the team, you get varsity. It doesn't seem like a big deal now, but if you were a starter, you, you could keep your socks. So it was like if you had four sets of socks, you're a four-year starter. It was a big deal, you know? And, uh, and so I didn't want to get rid of those. So I got rid of everything else. I also had a problem. My underwear I had on was like your standard white briefs. I didn't throw those out because I didn't throw everything out right away. Eventually I did. But then I didn't, I didn't know which pair of underwear I'd been wearing at that time. So now all my underwear became contaminated. Now when you have contaminated clothing, that means there's certain things you can and can't do while you're wearing that clothes. I was just, I was fucked. I was fucked in every way. Okay, so anyway, we're at the pool and I go in, there's a shower at the pool. So I go in the shower and I'm in the shower. I'm like, okay, just take a shower, get all the contaminated. I'm just washing and washing and washing and washing. I wouldn't, couldn't get out. And my stepmother comes running around eventually. She's like, get out of there. Somebody's going to find out what, what we did. And so, I, so I had to get out of there. And then, of course, I jumped in the pool. I had to. Now the pool's contaminated. I could never go in the pool again. Fuck that. That's, that's over for me now. You know, but anyway, so now at this point in my life, the major OCD attacks were coming from my stepmother. Okay, I, I'd have to counter everything. And, and, it's, and it's fucking weird because, do you want me to continue on my makeup? Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to talk while I'm doing the makeup on this. Okay. And the thing that's like fucking weird about it is I was horrified by it. It was terrible by the OCD attacks. But yet at the same time, 
I, my dick was getting hard. I was like sexually attractive. I'm fucking a 14 year old kid. You know what I mean? You can't, you know what I mean? You're fucked. You're just, I was fucked. You know, that's why you don't do that shit to fucking kids. You don't fuck with their heads like that. You know, it's, it, so anyway, for a minute there, I actually kind of went and pursued her and she did push it away for a minute. I think she realized, hey, I shouldn't have fucking done that. And then, and then at that point, I ne and then after that, I didn't want to go anywhere near. I didn't want her touching me because for one thing, it was the OCD. I, that was like the main best thing. I didn't want, you know, and anytime she like bumped up against me, or I would have to wash it. Like if my arm actually rubbed against her, I'd have to like wash, wash, wash it off, and wash and wash, and all constantly. And then there was all the nightmares. I had tons of nightmares of I'm fucking her, my father. It just completely fucked my head up sexually. Just fucked me up so bad. Now, and then I got another problem here. I'm thinking, okay, and this actually came later in life uh, where I would say to myself, okay, and this was like, like later after I was out of high school and that, and where the shit still bothered me. And I would say to myself, okay, now if I hadn't had OCD, okay. And because of the OCD attacks, I didn't start banging her. If I had, if I didn't have OCD, would I just kept fucking her? And what does that say about me then? See, it puts me in a fucking fucked up situation either way. I couldn't fucking win, man. It's fucking cunt, man. I like that slice that bitch's throat, man. Anyway, all the OCD attacks became triggered. Now I had another problem. First time I had an orgasm, right? It's from fucking her. So the only way, I have to, I have to get rid of that now, okay? I mean, I gotta have another girl suck my fucking dick and I have to come from that to offset what my stepmother did. Or I'm fucked, man. I have to have that. So I started seeing this girl in school who had a reputation for like, you know, banging around or like, you know, just, she was one of those girls that were easy, right? And I was very popular, like I said. I was like, I was like Steve Trill. I was the big man, man. Fucking, I was gorgeous. Every fucking girl, I mean, could have any fucking girl I wanted. I was the kind of guy where, I know this is very arrogant, but, I can't, it's, but it's true. I was the kind of guy where women would just walk up to you and give you their fucking number. You know what I mean? I was that fucking one of those guys, you know what I mean? And uh, then my hair fell out, I was fucked. But, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so, I'd find, so anyway, so I go, so go out with this girl, right? And I mean, she had a, she invited me to come to her house for a party. And she was like a nerdy girl. Like she was in the band and shit. And she was like, you know, she was really kind of a nobody. You know what I mean? But she was like kind of cute. She wasn't like ugly or anything. Uh, so anyway, I go to her house for a party. And my friend of mine showed up at the party, which I was surprised. Well, he, he was dating some girl in the band. So his name was, he was, I shouldn't have said his name, huh? I shouldn't put people's names in there. Yeah. But anyway, uh, he, uh, he was a cool guy. He was on the wrestling team. We were pretty good friends. And uh, he's like, yeah, man, why don't you take her back to my car? I got my car back. So I took her back to the car. I'm thinking, all right, fine. I can get this chick to suck my dick. I'll come and I can, I can, get, you know, I can really get rid of that fucking that bitch, offset that. She starts sucking my dick. Nothing. It was like I felt nothing. It was like there was no feeling at all. Because that bitch fucked up my head, man. I could, to this day, I can't come from getting head from a woman. It, it, it never has happened. I can't do it. Because of what she fucking did to me. It can't. And now I'm like, fuck. Now I'm like, now what the fuck am I going to do? I'm fucked. I can't even fucking, fucking come from some other girl. And she fucking giving me head. And I'm stuck with that. So now I, and I, had to, I had to have this happen. Or else I'm going to be trapped forever because my stepmother fucking did this to me. And don't forget, I'm the one that was responsible. I did. She did no wrong. It was me. It was all me. I always thought it was all me. That's what these fucking pieces of shit do. They do this to fucking... You know, and, they, and the fucking thing is, you know... Nah, I don't want to even go there. But uh, anyway... So now what do I do? So now I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm gonna have to bang this girl, man. If I have sex, if I actually have sex with her, okay, and come from that, that's even stronger than just getting head. So that'll offset it. I can do that. All right, so, so anyway, and, and, and the thing was, to have sex with her, again, don't forget, I got OCD. Before I can, since this is the very first time, like anytime you were doing something for the first time, everything had to be right. You had to have the right time. You can never have like 13 after or something like that or, 47, which is 13. Everything had to be exactly right before you did something the first time. So if it was going to be the first time I had sex, I had to have the right clothes on, I had to have the right thoughts, or you had to have the exact right positive thought the minute you came. Everything had to be perfect, okay? So it's like almost an impossible situation. So the first time we had sex, I don't even think I even came because I was having OCD attacks the whole time. And then eventually I did. I don't even remember. I can't even remember like the actual, I, well, my first actual like sexual encounter now it has to be just fucking my stepmother, which I can't even enjoy, which it's fucking like sickens me. When I, I can still, I can still smell that fucking bitch. I can still like the scent of her. It's, I can still smell it in my head. And it disgusts me, man. I just want to like fucking punch her in her fucking face. Anyways. <laughs> I know I'm getting a little, you know, people who know me as a clown, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm going to hire this fucking guy, you know, <laughs> but, but I, it's important that I talk about this because this was a major OCD thing that I went through. 
Okay, so once this bitch fucking realized... This is not how you behave as a clown. No, obviously not. No, no. I'm not at all. You're a successful clown. I'm a very successful clown. I'm amazing with kids and never. No, no, no. This is, this is, me, tell, this is me for the first time coming out and telling the truth about, you know... How I ended up a clown, essentially, because I had no other option. Well, that wouldn't go that, that. I'll get back to all that. Anyway, so now what happens is, now my father, like I said, was a good guy, but he could be physically abusive. And he had been abusive to me before when I was younger. It was like this time we went camping or something. He just like, my brother, he told us to be quiet. My brother said he freaked out. He pulls me out of the fucking bunk and starts beating the hell out of me with a fucking belt. And I got welts all over me and shit, you know. And, which was fucked up. He, you know, he, he would be, and he never touched any of my other birds. Only me. I was the only one. But anyway, so now this bitch, okay, she was like literally, like my sister and I have talked about this. And because when you get older, you look back, you can, you can see what happened. As a kid, you don't know what, you don't, you don't see this shit. You know what I mean? The bitch was like jealous that I was banging this other girl from fucking high school. And she couldn't have me. So she would start fights with my father. And my father is... For the, all the good that he was, there was the other side of him was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, okay? It was like, he could be so good, so supportive in sports, and you, you know, pay for your, like, your letter jacket, and a good school clothes, and then on the other side, he could be a fucking maniac. And that bitch was the one that fucking, for some reason, man, she had him so fucked up in his head that she could do no fucking wrong. And she would start fights with us. The first, one of the first fights was, uh, this is when we were still living in the colony, that was the name of our subdivision, where we lived, and, uh, she, they, were, they were bringing in groceries, right? And I go to open the door to help her, and she said something to me like, get your fucking ass out there and pick up a, you know, a thing. And I think I was, as a teenager, I said something. I don't know what I said, like, screw you or something. I don't know. So anyway, then I, I went back in the kitchen. I think I went back out to help with the bags. My father comes running up on the porch, and I'm more embarrassed about people in the neighborhood saying this. He just starts throwing punches at me, hitting me over and over again. And I'm not going to fight back, because this is my father. I don't want to hit my father. I loved my father. I mean, he was like all I fucking had, okay? So I'm not going to fight back. So anyway, that would happen. And then another time he, he did it, Another time he had flown off it started hitting me. And this time it was weird because he had done it in the past, but then this time he acted like it was the first time. He's like, I'm so sorry, I'll never hit you again. But that was bullshit. That didn't last long. A couple months later he's doing it again. Okay, and then, then the one time that was really bad, I had me at a dentist appointment in the morning. And I got up, I got up and I was, I was leaving the door. My stepmother was leaving at the same time. And she bitch mumbled bitch something. I don't know what it was. And I said something like, you know, I don't even want to go to the dentist. Just a fucking big deal. So I... Of course, she turns around, runs upstairs. God knows what she told my father. He runs down again, freaking out, throwing punches, hitting me. And this time he hit me, he hurt me pretty bad. Didn't really, because when he finished, I'm surprised I didn't break my nose. I was covered in blood. Because he gave me blood. I mean, I was literally, my I was covered in fucking blood. Okay? And, and I was like, I was just devastated. Here I am now, my father's abusing my stepmother, fucking rapes me. My fucking, my, my head's a fucking wreck. I'm, I'm, I'm making, you know, I, I don't know how the fuck I even got through it. I don't know how I fucking got through it. Anyway, anyway, if I don't remember, remember to ask me about suicide, okay? After I'm done with this, because there's something I gotta talk about that. Anyway, so I'm covered in fucking blood, and I should have just went to, I, was, I couldn't go to school like that, because I didn't want my dad to get in trouble, but I wish that I did now. I wish I did, they would have saw that, and then found out what was happening, the whole sexual abuse and everything. But anyway, at that point, I said to myself, I looked down at myself, and I was like, that's it, no more. He's not fucking hitting me again. Next time, I'm fighting back. And it happened again. We were in the fucking living room once, and I don't know what happened. She started something, or something pissed him off. He starts, comes at me. No, 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 not this time, motherfucker. I fucking slid in, did a double leg takedown, picked him up over my fucking shoulders. Like, I was a fucking badass wrestler, man. I could fuck him up. Picked him up over my shoulders, and I was like, I could have slammed him and just fucking beat the fuck out of him, slapped a guillotine on him and fucked. I could have fucking been sipping out of a straw the rest of his fucking life. And I fucking picked him up, but I didn't slam him. I let him down easy. And I looked at him and he said, the first thing he said to me was, pack your bags. I looked at him, I go, you know, I let you down easy. You're not hitting me ever again. I, I didn't have to do that. You're not hitting me ever again. You never touched me again. You never touched me again after that. And if he had came at me again, the next time, I wasn't going to let him down easy. I was going to slam his ass. I was going to fuck him up. I was going to punch his brain. I would have fucking snapped his fucking neck. I, would, I was going to fuck him up because enough is enough. And you were okay. how, how old? Huh? You were how old? Yeah. How, yeah. how old were you? Oh, how old was I? I think I was like 16 then. Yeah, probably 16. And you stayed in the house? Yeah, I was 16. Uh, After that? Yeah, well, I was, I was living with my father. Yeah, but yeah. It, it was awkward, right? 
Well, yeah, it was awkward. It was all fucked up. Of course. Like, well, I'm living in a fucking hell house. And then make matters worse. My sister gets pregnant at 16, disappears out of the blue. She's gone. Moves with some fucking scumbag to Texas. So it's just me, my crazy stepmother, my crazy father living in this house. And then my father, we lived in this beautiful private neighborhood and big house with pillars. He buys some shithole house he's going to remodel. He never finished it. So I was embarrassed about living there. I didn't want people to know I lived there. It was fucking horrible. It was like my whole life, everything was gone. From a little kid to having loving parents, brothers and sisters, a fucking the beach at the bottom of the hill, woods to play in, tree houses I would build, and fucking catching frogs and, you know, sled ride, every fucking possible positive thing a child could have in their life as growing up was gone. If just disappeared. But because I did have that good childhood, I think that's the only reason I'm fucking sane today. Okay, because when the shit fell apart, it was when I was like hitting puberty. Okay. Anyway, okay, I was with my. Uh, now, here's another thing with my stepmother. To be completely honest, I don't feel like I was molested because at the time when she actually. Like, it started when I was 14 and she ended up sucking my dick like shortly after my 15th birthday. And the thing is, at that time in my life, I was ready to become sexually active. I mean, you know, teenage boys get laid at 15, 16 all the time. It's not like a big deal. So I don't look at it like I was sexually molested. I definitely look at it as statutory rape. Definitely. And that's a whole other thing, too, because you got to remember back then it was fucked up. So I remember I think my girlfriend and I were looking at some book that was telling like the statutory rape laws back then. It was like if you were like, you could like bang a girl that was like 13 in, in, in New Mexico, and if she was okay with it, it was like legal. Like, what the fuck, man? That generation was just fucked up, those people. Anyway, uh, then I had a problem where, I mean, what was I going to say? Oh, and I have to ask myself, if I'm going to be completely honest with myself, if, it's, if I hadn't had OCD, you know, that's the thing that's fucked up. This woman does this to a guy that she knew was fucked up. She knew I was fucking mentally fucked up, and she still does this shit to him. What does that say about that person? So anyway, I have to ask, I have to ask myself, now, if I hadn't had OCD, and if she wasn't my stepmother, okay, and it was just some older woman, it might have been a good experience. It might have been fun. I might have been banging the shit out of it. Man, I'm banging this older chick. You know, might have, you know what I mean? It might have been a completely different scenario. I, if, if I'm completely honest, I mean, I, I don't know. You know, but because of the other shit that went with it, you know, who knows? So it's, a, it's, just, a, it's just a weird fucking thing, you know? All right, now, oh, I know where I was going to go with it. Okay, now, I'm doing all this associate, and you, you must say to yourself, Jesus Christ, how do you get through the fucking day when you got to do this shit all the time? Another thing I would have to do is I would have to, like, like if I saw something on the floor, I'd have to, like, pick, like, this little thing right here, this little, I'd have to pick this up, and then I'd have to pick up that. I, I would spend hours on picking up every little fucking thing on the floor. I would have to, every, you could do that, you'd be stuck on the floor, and then once in the OCD attacks would come in, so you had the bad thought when you picked up this, and I'd have the good thought when you pick up again. Pick, anyway, but it got, it got to the point where it was so bad where I was like, I wanted to just fucking kill myself. I just wanted to kill myself. But guess what? You can't even fucking kill yourself. Because you can't kill yourself until you've caught up on the fucking rituals. you got to say that positive thing enough times before you're even allowed to kill yourself. You couldn't even fucking kill yourself. You're fucked, man. You're just stuck in this fucking hell. There's no way around it. And I, and I always feel like I was like... Like when I say stuck, I felt like there was this thing covering over me that I was like trapped. I always had this feeling of being trapped. But you were seriously suicidal at one point? No, I, no, I wasn't because I wanted to kill myself, but I couldn't kill myself because you had to catch up on the rituals first. So no, you're not suicidal because you don't have that option. I wish I had that option. You didn't even have that fucking option. It was that fucked up, man. You didn't even have a way out, man. You're just fucked. Anyway, uh, okay. I had a few other OCD. Oh, I had this one OCD. Oh, this guy, one of a real popular kid at school, got killed in a car accident. Uh, and that really affected me with OCD. And I had, there was a thing I developed with OCD where, like, say I was in a room and I was having an attack, I just, and I was, like, stuck in a, in a room or somewhere, and I had to keep saying something over and over again before I could leave. I, I developed this thing where if I, ha I couldn't possibly stay in the room, I had to go, my friends were waiting or something, I could put it on hold. I'd leave, go out, boom, and then later that night I'd have to come back and get back to the ritual. I'd have to get back to it. I put on hold. And after he died, of course, I had an OCD attack. And there was, I can't remember what it was, but I remember that thing lasted a couple of months where I kept having to go back to my room and say there was a ritual over and over and then come out and get back to it later. And finally I got it under control. And here's weird too, because anything could trigger you to have to say something again. You see the color pink, that would mean like you're gay, so that's wimpy, you'd have to see blue to offset that. And any number of things could trigger an OCD attack. And after I got, that attack was really bad that when I kept having coming back to it. But, but I learned to do that because 
If you kept trying to get ahead of an attack, it would just increase. And then once you start getting upset, then you were really like fucked because then you, then the, you, you, you were really in trouble because you couldn't be. So I learned that when I started to couldn't get upset, walk away from it, I'll get back to it later. I'll come back to it later. But anyway, I was, did that with this OCD attack, was something you know, that was caused by his death. And then the one day that I, and oh yeah, this is important. After I would say, my, say I would say, I'm gonna save his life, I'm gonna save his life, save his life, save his life. Right after I finally got it right, the time was right, the thought was right, I would have to make like a sound, like, uh, like a sound like that. So, that. so that I made that sound right after I said it the last time. So that means I'm done, I'm good. Because I made a sound after that. I don't have to go back to that ritual. Anything that I see or do from here on out, I'm okay. Because the last thing I did was make that sound. You see what I'm coming back with this? Okay, so anyway, I finally got that one under, under control. And I went over to visit a friend of mine, and he was doing a, a report in school on abortion. And his mother was a nurse, and she got him actual like fetuses and a thing. And I saw those, and you would think, now that would fuck me up with OCD. You know, seeing those, I'd have to go back and start saying, but it didn't because I got, made that sound first and I could move on. Which it seems to me, it makes no sense. The whole fucking thing is like ridiculous. Oh, and then I had a fear that, uh, you know, something went in my head that my girlfriend would end up getting pregnant or something, which did happen anyway later uh, in high school. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. Uh, I would be having sex with my girlfriend, and every time I thrust it in her, if I had an att I would have OCD attacks, and I would have to keep count of how many, each time I'm doing it, and, 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 and keep track of what I'm thinking while I'm doing that. That's how bad OCD was, it even was in my sex life. I would have OCD when I'm in my dreams, even. I would wake up in the morning, I do, when I go to sleep, and I would, I would, I would have dreams, and I would be doing it. I really should touch up on that, on that a little bit, too. All right, the girl that I was seeing in high school now, again, Okay, she was a nobody. I, mean, I don't mean to be mean, but she was. And I did not want to be with this chick. I, did, I, I, you know, I, I had nothing to do with her, you know, and I couldn't even break up with her because every time I did, I'd have to have the right thought, the right thing. I'd have to see that and I'm stuck with this girl. All these beautiful women I could have had. And I, I can't be with her. I'm stuck with her. I couldn't get out of the way. And then to make matters worse, if I was able to, Every time I said I was gonna, I was gonna break up with her, she'd say she's gonna kill herself. One time she put on this big thing, she had pills out and everything, and I'm terrified. And one of my fears is people are gonna die. Now she's, she's got me terrified she's gonna kill herself every time I break up with her. And even once I went to the guidance counselor and I told him, I, I, can't, I just couldn't take it anymore. And he said, just break up with her, just Eddie. She, I'm like, well, she kills herself, it'll be my fault. He's like, no, it won't. She, she, no, no, he didn't say no, it won't. He said, he said she's not gonna kill herself. She, you know. But if he would have just said to me, said to me, it won't be your fault. I would have been, but nobody actually said that. So I was stuck with this bitch all through high school. I, it fucking was a nightmare. And the reason she did that is because she knew without me, she was a nobody. She wasn't getting into the parties. She wasn't with the in crowd. She was a nobody without me. She knew that, you know what I mean? But anyway, that's, that's a whole nother thing. But anyway, that did have an effect on my life because from, from that day on, for, from that experience on, I swore I'd never get into a relationship again, ever, because I, I, I no way. You know what I mean? Because I missed out on all these women. Like, and I'm all, I've, since then, I've always been trying to play catch up. You know, bang as many beautiful women as I can. You know, that, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother OCD thing that comes later that I would have to, I would have to get into you about. It's, this is a whole nother aspect. Like I said, my life is so, it's fucking crazy. You know, and anyway, I got to, where was, oh, uh, oh, end of my ninth grade year. Somehow, some way, I pulled together enough strength, enough to not do the fucking, I had, I was supposed I had to do, not do a ritual. Like a bad thought went in my head and I said, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say, like, like it's like, you're gonna kill somebody. I, I, I refuse to say, no, I'm gonna save your life. I wouldn't do it. I said, I'm not gonna do it. I, I gotta beat this thing. Fuck enough of this. Cause like I said, don't forget every single day I woke up, I was determined to not do this and I was gonna beat this. And by some fucking miracle, I didn't do the rituals. And I, and, and, and I always had like this kind of like a, I don't know if you want to call it a, not a fog, not a cloud, like something was always over. I didn't feel myself. I was never myself. And when I finally stopped doing these rituals, stopped, I finally beat this thing, my mind went right back to the way it was before. I was myself again. I felt good again. I was back. I beat it. I'm fucking clear. Unfortunately, I don't know, a month, two months later, I don't know what it was. I'm sitting in my room and the closet door, I went, I went and I shut the closet door and I sat down. And I had the urge to have to reopen it again. And I said to myself, don't do it, dude. Don't do it. Don't fucking do it. Like, but I did. I got up, opened the door, and shut it again. I was fucked again. It was back. So I opened and shut it again. Opened and shut it again. OCD was back again. It's completely back. It's a product of the serotonin. 
Yeah, that's what they say. Something like that. The serotonin doesn't move. Like your serotonin. Like it's easy to say just stop doing that, but it doesn't work. I found that. I found that in life. I found that out in life, through years of OCD. It doesn't work. Anyway. You, you think it's genetic? Yeah, there's genetics too. My they, they say my grandfather had it. My great grandfather something had it. Not, I mean, you don't feel like anything happened to you when you were five years old. Right? No, no, it's not nothing like that. No, like the psychiatrist when they first, when I first told him about the sexual abuse. Uh, a lot, well, first, I told my doctor, and uh, I think she she thought maybe that's what caused it. Or but no, abuse. my stepmother. Yeah, when, you were fourteen. Yeah, yeah, but my, my yeah, my well, I mean, my psychiatrist later, like recently. Yeah, but the, but the OCD thing showed its head. Yeah, yeah, it was before that though. But they, but they thought maybe it was that's what caused the OCD. But no, I was I had OCD far before right, before that happened. No, no, OCD was just like I was five years old. The first OCD attack I had, but I did, just I didn't know what it was and it disappeared, never came back. All right, so anyway, uh, some miracle, I graduated from high school. Another thing that was always a problem was fucking religion. I mean, I, that was a nightmare. I was brought up in this, you know, Catholic, Italian Catholic thing, you know. Uh, you know, uh, baptism, catechism, you know, fucking all that horse shit. Uh, and first communion. And, uh, and then it was weird because we, my dad, it was my dad, not my mom so much. And then one day we just didn't go to church. It was weird. And when we were little kids, we were like, we were in the house and we were just like, you know, we we're kind of like, man, we're looking at the clock. Man, it's fucking like, it's 8.30. He's not down here yet. You know, like, you know, we had to leave, be at church by 9. We're like, man, we're like, shh, don't say, don't say anything. You know, like, keep and he didn't come down. We didn't go to church that day. And we were just like, oh, what the, don't say anything. Just, 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 just let it. And then we never went again. It just ended. Catechism and everything ended. But anyway, I still had that religious back, that fucking brainwashing in my head. So that was, that was always a problem with OCD, too. And a lot of people I've read that, the OCD can stem from that too, from religion. And uh, so at night, if I had to say my prayers like our father, when I said amen, it was a nightmare. I'd have to say it over and over and over, have the exact right thought when I said it. But anyway, at graduation, like coming up to graduation, there's all these different banquets and things. And they always said a fucking prayer, like at the end of the bank, and that would fuck me up. And so I had to keep count of how many times I'd said amen. And I was, and I was sitting there, ready to get the diploma, you know, well, the fake diploma, they give it to you, you get the real one later. But, and, and I was like, I was like, just fucking like, okay, just get through this amen shit if you, when they said, and somehow I got through it, you know, and I, and I graduated by some fucking miracle. But here I am graduated. I'm completely fucking, I have no education. I always kind of consider that I only have an eighth grade education because that was eighth grade was the last time I fucking learned anything. But that's not really true because I've learned stuff on my own since then. But, uh, so here I'm, I'm graduate. Where am I going to go? What am I going to fucking do? Not one fucking person made any effort to help me or give me any guidance. Nobody. Not a trade school, not a college. I wanted to go to college. I desperately want, like, okay, I was hoping to get a wrestling scholarship, but OCD fucked me up so bad in wrestling. And I was one of the best wrestlers in the state. Now, when I say that, I wasn't one of the best wrestlers in the state. I had the potential to be, but OCD would fuck that up where I couldn't. For example, I wrestled this one guy. He took third, this is my junior year. He was a senior. I wrestled, and he'd beat, pinned me before when I was younger. He was really good. I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. He beat me by two points. I had him on the stall in the last round, and he was like third in the state my junior year, okay? I had, years later, a friend of mine who wrestled for a big, big college, okay, started. This was after, this was years later. Uh, this was like after I got out of the Navy. I was like 22, and he was, this guy's kind of a jerk. Uh, but anyway, I think he wanted to thought he was just like, going to kick my ass in wrestling, you know, because I hadn't wrestled since high school. Man, I wrestled that. He outweighed me by 20, 30 pounds. I went toe to toe with this dude. I hadn't wrestled since fucking high school. I went toe to toe with him, man. He just was like, it was really bugging him. Then he wanted to weigh in and he saw that I weighed less. He was like, you weigh more. He was like, really like b bothered the shit out of him, you know? But see, that's what I mean. I had that kind of potential. But, you know, and that's bad enough that it fucks you up in sports. But the worst is that it's fucked me up in my education. Anyway, so, like I said, I, I mean. You enjoy being a clown? <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, actually, I do. I mean, a lot of times I look at it like, you know, I missed out on so much in life that I, you know, could have been and done because it's just fucked up in the head. But uh, I make kids laugh. There's no wrong in that. You know what I mean? It's, it's you know, that's what I do. I make kids laugh. I, you know, my critics can say what they want, you know, but I can silence them when you just say, look, I'm making children laugh. I, you know, what's, I, get, I, I do parties now where I was at somebody's party when they were like six and now I'm doing their kids party. You know, and, and I have people all the time come up to me that are like older, like in their 20s. Man, you were at my birthday party. It was the best one I ever had when I was six. And, you know, so it's, it's there's no wrong in it. Are, are you a clown instead of a doctor, lawyer, politician, whatever? Yeah. Well, that, yeah. Because yeah. because of your OCD? Yeah, of course. I never would have been doing this. Of course. You kidding me? I would have I I graduated. I would have got out of high school. I would have went to probably Penn State or Pitt. 
Probably would have wrestled for those schools. Uh, I was too small to play big football, though. But I would have wrestled for sure. I would have got a wrestling scholarship for sure. I would have went to college. I probably would have majored in law. Probably got into politics. I was like big time into politics when I was a kid. I was big time into debating. All that went away when I fucking went with OCD. But now that I'm on these meds, now I still love the debate, man. I go toe to toe with anybody in the debate on any topic. You discovered meds. Huh? You, you started taking meds when? It was like about seven years ago. Hmm. I went to that. You know what? Maybe. Well, no, no, actually, that's not true. I start, I, when I moved out to California, I had a couple of bad attacks, and I said, enough of this shit. I said, I, I'm, you know, and I never wanted to take meds because I hate drugs. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do any drugs. I'm like, I can't drink, smoke, or do any drugs. Man. My brain, you, I cannot do that. Okay? You know, my, I'll be fucked. Uh, but uh, I, I, I went to some, I, I never bothered to get my VA benefits when I got, I should have. But I went to some psychiatrist in Orange County, and he put me on Luvox. I think that's what it was called. And it worked, but not like the stuff I'm on now. And then he just, then I started self-medicating. I just drive to Tijuana and get the meds, you know. Uh, what do you take now? Uh, Cetra something, saline, I don't know. I'd have to look up. It's a fucking long name. Gives but it's helping S. you. Gives with an S. Yeah, it works really good. Um, but I was doing that. And the the, the self-medicate doesn't work. It's, and then I would get on and off. And then, then you, you think with meds, you get on meds and then you're, you're doing really well, so you think you don't need them anymore. So then you get off them, then you're fucked. You know what I mean? That happens all. So now I know, you know, you, you, dude, you're stuck. And I hate taking meds, you know, but you have, what are you going to do, man? Your brain doesn't work right, you know? What are, the, what are the downsides of the meds? Well, for one thing, it's almost impossible to have an orgasm. That's one downside. Uh, that's probably really the only one, really. It used to get like joint pains and things, but I think, oh, that's pretty much gone now. I don't really get that anymore. Uh, that's probably the only really bad one. You sleep fucking great with them. You know, I mean, you knocked out, you know. And I'll, and I'll skip my meds every now and then. Like, if I want to, like, watch some porn and masturbate, you know, and not have to fight forever to get in that, I'll skip one. I can skip a med, like, for, you know, maybe a day, couple of days, two, three days, and three at the most. I won't chance it after that. Um, my psychiatrist doesn't want to hear that. You know, I don't tell them that that I skip them. Has OC, OCD affected your romantic relationships? Oh, of course. I mean, so because you're taking the meds, you don't... Well, no, not like that. Uh, a little bit, but not really. Okay, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. OCD and Rome, that's good, because that's where we can, we can start with that next. That's another one. No, we're t I'm, I'm shooting. Uh oh, okay, <laughs> well, I'm going to start with that. Anyway, uh, I got out of high school, and eventually I think I did get out of that relationship with that fucking girl. I mean, the time was right, the client was able to fuss some miracle. And I'm seeing this other girl, right? Okay, I developed this thing where OCD would come in my head. It would say, I'm about to have sex with a girl. My OCD would say, you're not going to be able to get it up. Now I can't get my dick hard. OCD is stopping me from having fucking... Here I was stuck with this fucking girl all through high school. Now I'm able to bang all these beautiful women. And now OCD won't even let me do that. And I couldn't get my fucking dick hard. It would, OCD would say, your dick's not going to get hard. And guess what? It ain't getting hard. It, would not, it wouldn't do it. I went through a whole thing with that. And that, last, and that comes and goes still, you know. It's weird today. Like now if I take the medication, okay, well, my dick will get hard, but now you can't come. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like if you don't take your meds, OCD will say your dick's not going to get hard and it won't get hard. But so you take the meds and it will, but now you can't, but now you can't orgasm. It's like what the fuck, man? Not, not to say that I haven't had some really great sexual experiences in my life. That, I can tell you about all that later because I've traveled all over the world, and let me tell you something. I've... And you would think that that would be enough, that I could, you know, move on, you know, and like make a commitment to somebody, but I can't. But that's a whole different thing. I don't think that's an OCD thing. I just don't, I just don't get the whole marriage thing, man. You know, I, well, okay, this doesn't really have anything to OCD, but I'm, I'm kind of, since we're on that topic, uh, uh, there is the thing with like where I, I was like in those relationships in high school trap that I, well, I wanted a variety of women over, you know, because I wanted to, I was always trying to play catch up. I think of all the different women I missed out on. And even after I got out of that thing, well, there was a lot of beautiful women I, I should have been banging with. I wasn't. I got caught up with women that I really didn't even want to be with, but I stayed with them. They were nice girls, though. But anyway, uh, just, I just forgot what I was going to Oh, I know what I was going to say. Uh, no, I could never get married anyway. There's nothing to do with OCD. I cannot, I, I don't get married. Okay, we, we seek variety in every aspect of our lives, be it in music and literature and films and foods and travel and art. We're always looking for something new, something different, something more exciting. Why would you not look for variety in your sex life too? See, I don't get that. How can you be the one person your entire life? That's it. 
I mean, there's a plethora of variety out there. I mean, look at all the different continents. Just that, Asia and South America, and, you know, North America, you know, India and, uh, you know, Africa, and this is Europe. And, 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 and with each of one of those, if you take like Asia, you've got Vietnamese women and Cambodian women and Chinese and Japanese. There's, and then on that, you've got women with mohawk, short hair, no hair, you know, cheerleader types, sophisticated types, punkers, you know, rockers. There's such a variety of women there. How can you possibly, and for women too, a variety of men, how can you possibly be the one person for the rest of your life till the day you die? It'd be like eating the same thing every fucking day. It'd be like eating pizza every day of your life. Every day. Not just eating pizza, but eating the same exact slice of pizza every day for the rest of your life. I don't get that. Maybe I'm missing something because a lot of people get married and a lot of people like it and a lot of people find fulfillment in that. So, you know, maybe I'm missing something. I got nothing, I mean, more power to you. I got nothing against it, you know. But for me, I, I just can't imagine that. You know, anyway, that's a, that's a whole other thing. All right, anyway, I get out of high school. And oh, it's another thing. I had a job in high school. I worked at this truck stop. I'm late for work every fucking day because I'm an OCD, right? But I had this manager that was so fucking cool. She was mean and tough and strong and she'd cuss you out and give you hell. She was like this big kind of like truck driver kind of looking lady, but she was fucking fair. And I'd come in like two hours late for work, man, every fucking weekend. Most of the times I was at a party the night before at this point and, you know, I can't, I, I can't totally say it was all OCD and I was up banging my girlfriend all night. Then, you know, you get the football, you have the football game, you go to the big party, the keg party, then you go bang your girlfriend all night and then you crawl out. You're supposed to be at work at eight. I don't get there till 10. But she never busted my balls about it because when I got there, I worked my ass off and she knew that. And she, I was really good. I was like a bus boy, right? And then later I became a cook. But I was like, she knew that. And, and she would cuss you out. You know, she, and she was, but she was fair and honest. You know what I mean? Her, I'd say her and my football coach were two people that really did uh, f support my life. It's kind of like they knew I was fucked up, but they saw the potential there. Even if they didn't say it, they knew it. You know what I mean? They knew this guy, there was just something wasn't working right with this guy. Anyway, while I'm working at this truck stop, okay, uh, it was mostly high school. Well, for a while there when I worked there, it was all high school kids there. It was like me, this guy, this other guy went to another school. There was the cook, me, and then this girl that I went to high school. She was the server. There was like three of us. We're running the whole fucking, that's it, man. There wasn't even a manager around. Three fucking high school kids were fucking running this restaurant. And let me tell you something. Things got pretty fucking crazy. You know, you know we're high school kids, you know what I mean? I don't know how the thing even worked with, with having us there. Eventually, they brought, I think that's why they brought her in as the manager. She used to work there. They brought, I think they brought her in to kind of rein in the, the crazy, you know, the you know, these kids, like, wait a minute, you know, we got to, you know, have the, you know, the owner was a cool guy. It was just a cool place to work as a kid. But anyway, at this place, later, there was this, there was this family that worked there, and these people were poor. You know, this was like, the, the mother was a server there, her daughter was a server, I think their son was, like, worked at the, in the, at the gas station part, it was a truck stop. And this one girl, like, and the other girls that worked there, they're like these really young, like, really, like, pretty high school, wealthier, for wealthier families, you know, these young, real beautiful girls, you know, from wealthy families, you know, and this poor girl was like, you know, poor and kind of overweight and, you know, I just must have been hard on her. And anyway, I come into work one day and Pat, the, the lady I'm talking about, the manager, and, and you never saw her cry. She was crying, man. I never saw her cry before. She was sitting at the table and she's crying. Tears were out of her. I was like, I was like, what happened? What happened? And uh, that young girl, uh, her father, okay, took a knife and he fucking sliced her up like a fucking Christmas ham, man. She had fucking scars, every stitches all over her fucking body. He like went after her with a fucking butcher knife or something and just fucking cut her to pieces, man. It's like, this is the fucking generation, those fucking people, man. They did this to this poor fucking girl. And this girl, I can't believe how well she was handling it, you know what I mean? She was like so strong. It fucking makes me emotional when I think about it. This woman was so strong. This young girl, man, a fucking teenager, and she was so strong how she endured that. And you know what? Nothing even happened to that fucking guy. And then we're there, not, oh, 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 oh. How could I forget this? Okay, here's the, okay, my stepmother and that whole sexual abuse, and my father, the physical abuse. Here's the punchline. You're gonna love this. My father is the director of children's services. My stepmother is the head of the adoption agency. How you like that? Is that a fucking punchline for you? Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, I ain't shitting you. Imagine that. And there was some big scandal at Children's Services my senior year, I remember. I don't know, because I was fucked up with those CD. I couldn't follow what was going on. I can't imagine what the fuck was going on at that place. They were probably fucking raping teenagers left and right at that goddamn fucking place. Yeah, how you like that for a punchline? Anyway, this girl, and my father was a good social worker. I mean, when we were kids, I remember we used to be like kids that were like, 
didn't have, were homeless because their parents were abused. They would stay at our house until they found a place. And now he did all that. And this is when I, and, and I, I came and I told this girl, I said, look, my dad's a head of director of children's service. I'll get you some help. And, I and my dad, I told him, he's like, no, no, I want to get involved right now. We have a, and that's when I knew that his heart wasn't in social work anymore. You know, and, and then I, I had to go back and tell her this. And it's just, and anyway, that guy, her father did that to her. Nothing ever even happened to the fuck. He didn't even get arrested. Nothing even happened to the fucking piece of shit. That's how they used to treat teenagers back then. They, and you wonder why these teenagers would grow up, you know, like, in, like they're in their 30s. Then you hear them, they go and they, they, like those guys, that, that kid that hid in the garage and blew his fucking parents away. Yeah, you wondered why they fucking did that. Well, that's fucking why. You know what I'm saying? That's why they fucking did it. You know, I'd love to blow my fucking stepmother. No, I, mean, I would love to blow her fucking brains out. And they, they wonder why. People grow up, okay, and then they, they, they fucking are like, you know, what, what, he killed his fucking father. Yeah, why did he kill his fucking What did his fucking father do to him his whole fucking life? You know what I mean? But that's how they treated teenagers back then. They, now, today, I think it's different, you know. It's not, you know, they, they take the, a like, teenager says, because it's like my generation, if a teenager says something, you know, great, yeah, can you just lie too? This, I know this bullshit, you, you know, of course. But you're going to take, you take it more seriously. Back then, nobody gave a fuck, man. It was like, you know, you do whatever you, and especially if you're a teenage boy, you can do whatever you want to them. You know, it doesn't fucking matter. You know, it's like, you know, I had a girl once said to me, oh, you loved it. That's just a fucking attitude. I'm like, fuck you, bitch. You know, but you know, I shouldn't say that like that because a lot of women I have, and not many people have told that about, they, they were compassionate about it. You know? So I think, I'm not going to say that all, mo, even most women react that way. Most women are compassionate about it. But there is a thing though, without a doubt, when it's a boy, a young guy, there still is a thing where, eh, you know, boys will be boys. With whether it's a teenage girl, it's different. And it shouldn't be. But it, it, that is, it is like that. But, you know, it, it, is, it is what it is, you know. As I'm talking, I'm actually having some OCD attacks, like having to remember to say so I can feel it like right here. So I've been doing, I was all going through this. Anyway, I get out of high school. Where's your nose? Oh, geez, yes, of course, my nose. This, this is the worst part of being a clown, putting on the fucking clown nose. Yeah. <laughs> you have to make sure you, the hat and the nose, you have to make sure your skin is really, Really dry. But anyway, that same girl that did say that smart ass comment, this is the OCD attack I just had. I have to I had to remember what I was gonna say, I'll say it was gonna bug me. She did she did also say to me, you know, you know, something about don't let her get away with it, you have to tell your story. Some something of that sort, you know, you don't want her to get away with, you know, she'll get away with it. You gotta let people know. So she she did, even though she said that comment. So it's not really fair for me to, to you know, because it's not fair, I don't want to come up that I'm like, you know, women here, a guy, something like that happened to a guy, and, and I'm like, you know, women are like, oh, too bad he's a teen. That's not true. The majority of women do. They, they, they feel bad for the guys, too. You know. But anyway, I graduate from high school. I go through it. I'm working at this place. I got nowhere to go. Oh, then I met this other girl. Ugh. Okay, remember I told you the thing where OCD wouldn't let me go Dick Hart? I meet this other girl. She's like, her car, she smashed her car into something. I think she drove it on press. I'd seen this girl. She was not attractive at all. She was like a druggy girl, you know? And, uh, oh, this is something I should mention. Uh, I never did drugs or anything. Now, here's another thing, okay? Now, smoking marijuana is no big deal to me at all. I don't, I'm glad I voted for legal. As a matter of fact, I have no problem with people doing drugs. As a matter of fact, I think all drugs should be legal. I do have a problem with people that do drugs that can't afford to do drugs, so they break into my property and rip out all the coppers so they can buy their drugs. You know, it'd be, it'd be like me wanting to eat at a five-star restaurant every night, but I can't afford it, so I rob and steal to do it. I do have a problem with that. But if you want to do drugs, do all the drugs you want if you can afford them. I could care less. Anyway, I, I started smoking marijuana, which I would never did before. And this was a kind of a dangerous thing with OCD because sometimes I'd get high and you could get so caught up in an OCD attack while you were high that you'd be like deep, deep in that you couldn't come out of it. You know, and then, and then I'd pull myself, but it was a very, very short lifting. I never liked it. I never, there was nothing I was never interested in. But now, but now I could have, say I had an OCD attack where I smoked marijuana and I had an OCD attack the first time I did it. So I had to smoke it again, okay, to offset the thought I had the first time I smoked it. You could, you could, OCD could literally force you to have to smoke marijuana every day. Now, people would look at that and say, oh, he's addicted to marijuana. No, he ain't addicted to marijuana. He's got fucking OCD and we'll let him stop doing it. Okay, now, now, OCD, I, don't, I would say had, I wouldn't even, I guess this would be a positive effect. Okay, for the last like 40 years, every fucking day, I eat two apples, two oranges, a banana, Cucumber, carrot, tomato. 
every day. I, I, once a week, I buy them, I wash them all off, really good, dry them with a paper towel, even wash the skins, you know, and everything, even the ones with the skins on it. Put them in a plastic bag, seal it up with a twisty, nice and, you know, safe and contamination free. And every day, I eat one of those and two cans of tuna. Every fucking day. Okay, now, say, say I was an alcoholic, say, say, say it went the other way, I told my psychiatrist, one of my psychiatrists, I said, went the other way and I was drinking and, and, and I had an attack where I had to drink beer every day, okay, because of OCD, all right? And I wouldn't even say that's an OCD thing now, but I guess it probably is a kind of, okay? People would say, oh, he's an alcoholic. No, he ain't an alcoholic. He's got fucking OCD. That's why he has to keep drinking. See what I mean? People wouldn't see that. Anyway, I, I get, I, I have nowhere to go. No, what I'm going to do with my fucking life, I'm completely fucked. So what do I do? I joined the Navy. I had nowhere else to go. What else was I going to do, you know? Now, let me tell you something. I got the boot camp. I loved it. For, the only thing I didn't like about it was too damn easy. I got out of boot camp. I was in the worst shape of my life because it was so easy. I excelled, okay? The OCD wasn't really around much. Uh, I won the push-up contest. I did, like, I think, 79 push-ups or something. I was an athletic petty officer, and it was fucking great in the Navy because now everything had to be an exact way. There was no questioning it. I always... Putting my shoes away was always a nightmare. Do they go this way? Do they go? Where do the laces go? It was always a problem. Do they go this way? Do they go that? It's been hours doing that. Not in the Navy. The shoes go exactly like this. The laces go in the shoe. The bed gets folded exactly like this. Perfect line. Everything had to be straight. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh my God, I felt fucking relieved. I was like, yes, finally. These questions don't have to be answered. I don't have to worry about, it. am I doing the bed right? Am I fucking putting my clothes on right? No, this shirt had to be exact. This had to be exact. It was fucking great. It was like, and I fucking excelled, man, of course. You know, because it was just like, you know, it was perfect. There was no questioning. What happens after that? I become a male stripper because I'm good looking. I'd fucking make a ton of fucking money. I become like a fucking famous stripper in fucking Buffalo. I become rich as fucking hell. I'm buying up fucking properties fucking everywhere. I I, I change. I fucking for I, I change my fucking. Are we on right now? Yeah, yeah. Oh god, I'm still saying it anyway. I changed my name. Okay. I, I I forged a birth certificate. Right. Got a new, whole new social security number, whole new driver's license, everything. A whole, an identity that I, I won't say the name I have. I still have it today. I could use it today if I want. I paid taxes on it. I served jury duty. Completely fucking different thing. And at that time, in, well, I, was, I was in Tampa. For, see, it's better if I can start from the beginning and show you how it led up to all this stuff. But that's what ended up happening, okay? All right. And then, uh, I don't know if you want to get into all the details of all that, but... Uh, I, had a t I got OCD under control, okay, when I was in Tampa. I hit rock bottom, and again, I stopped it, and this time I fucking stopped it for good. It was, I didn't do it. I mean, and I'm watching Phil Donahue, and he's got a show on OCD, and that's where I learned what the fuck I had. It's like, fuck, that was such a big weight off my shoulder. Like, that's what's fucking wrong with That's my problem. My girlfriend gives me the book, The Boy Who Couldn't Stop Washing. So I read that and everything makes sense. And now I say to myself, wait a minute. I didn't do anything wrong when I went AWOL. I was fucking crazy. I fucking, I realized, you know, and one of the first things I did was I got a, got a lawyer because I was going to get out of the Navy. But the lawyer was bullshit. And he's like, he wasn't going to help me at all. So I didn't. So that's when I changed my name and did all that. And I'm making a ton of fucking money, man. I made so much fuck. I was so, I was like, I was gorgeous. I was a good looking guy. And I started my, I started my own, yeah, as a male stripper. How, how long did you work as a stripper? Like 10, about eight years. Eight years. I made a fortune. I had my own company. I had guys that work. I started in Erie, Pennsylvania. Then I went. Then I did it in Tampa. Then in Buffalo. Buffalo's where I made most of my. And I had guys that worked for me. I had my own group. I bought up. I was buying up tons. I was about bidding guys on properties that were twice my. And this is when I had OCD under control. Because now it's under control. I'm kicking ass, man. I'm back, baby. I'm fucking making money. I'm fucking got my own business. You're looking at a guy. I was fucking in the Navy, completely fucked, couldn't do anything. Now he's 22 years old, okay, and I'm making a, I'm making a fortune as a stripper. Then, like, by the time I'm 24, I got 24, I had OCD under control. Now I'm, I'm fucking like a, a leading fucking, I'm, I'm eating the best fucking restaurants. I fucking got a beautiful girlfriend. I got fucking, I'm fucking kicking ass, man. I'm like fucking making more money than my father, who's a professor now. I, I'm fucking, I'm the dumb, it's like crazy, man, because OCD is under control now. But it wasn't under control. I started having other attacks that I couldn't control. Thoughts would not leave. I wouldn't do the thing where I had to say something over and over again, but now I had thoughts that would not leave my head and they bombarded me and bombarded me. Okay, then, it, we, there's a lot I could get into on this. There's a whole lot of other shit I could tell you would blow you away, but we want to wrap this up, so we're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna just put this in speed zone. Okay, 
Long story short, this girl I was going to marry, she was black, right? As soon as my fucking, uh, uh, okay, and I was raised never to be a racist. My stepfather, a fucking piece of shit. As soon as I announced that I'm getting married to a black girl, guess what? All of a sudden, I get fucking turned in. It turns me into the fucking military. But actually, it wasn't quite like that. I get a call from my step. This is right after I announced the engagement to my girlfriend who's African-American. She's actually half black. She's half Polish, half black. Fucking gorgeous fucking girl. Okay, but that, that's a whole other thing. I, like I said, I'm not going to get into all that. I, I can't... I, I could go, there's so much, there's so many things that would blow you away, but we want to wrap this up. So anyway, I get a call and he says, yeah, the police were here looking for you. I'm like, what? And I and he made, I immediately thought it was the Navy and he didn't say, he made it sound like it was. And, and then anyway, it's like, there's no doubt in my, I mean, the, the odds of that happening exactly at that time were, were like a million to one. Anyway, so... I mean, that was a dick, man. He just, he fucked me over. Completely. I never liked that piece of shit anyway. You know, I wish I would have kicked his ass when I was in high school. Anyway, uh, so what do I do? I didn't fucking run and hide. I went right back to the Navy. I went back, man. I went back. I went straight to Bethesda. I went straight to the psych ward. And I told him what the fuck happened. And let me tell you something. The Navy could not have been more understanding. These people were fucking, from the minute I got there, they were fucking behind me. They had my back. And you know why? Because in the military, they deal with mental illness all the fucking time. You got guys going off the wars. They see people getting their heads cut off. They get fucked up in the head. So when you come back and they hear this shit that's going on in your head, what happened? They get it. They're like, Jesus Christ. They're like, no, we get it, man. You're fucked up. <laughs> You're fucking... They get it. Every single person through the step helped me out. Matter of fact, I, when I went back, I went to Bethesda, and they sent me to Norfolk, where that would have been my last command. I'm there right away. They start giving, they give me an ID. They start giving me a paycheck. They start paying me. They give me a meal pass. I'm getting these amazing meals. I'm on a fucking plane that fucking night. I'm back in Buffalo. I'm, and then we go over to Canada and when I'm having dinner with my girlfriend in Canada and I'm fucking back in the military. It was fucking crazy. I couldn't believe it. And when I tried to turn myself in, it was almost impossible. Everywhere I went, these dudes were like, you sure you want to do this? You sure you want to do this? I'm like, look, yeah, I really want to do this. They're like, are you sure, man? Are you sure? I was like, it was crazy. I couldn't believe it. And anyway, every step of the way through the military, Everybody I talked to through the chain of command and told my story were 100% backed me up. Oh, we understand. Oh, my God, this is so horrible. Never did anybody, oh, you went anyway, you were. No, it wasn't like that at all. They got it. Somebody, it was fucking nice because finally somebody acknowledged this. So th this was like, like proof, you know, why my grades were so bad, why things had gone so wrong in my fucking life. They fucking got it, okay? I got an honorable discharge. All charges dropped, honorable discharge. I got VA benefits today. I mean, I, I, I feel like I, you know, I feel like I could cry just thinking about it now because the. See, this is when I get emotional, man, because I'm very fucking patriotic. I love my country and I wanted to serve my country honorably, and I fucking couldn't. And the military fucking came through for me, and it was like, and the, the fucking goddamn most. And the one regret that I really do have is that when I went back, I wish I would have instead of just getting a dis, trying to get a discharge. I wish I would have said, you know what? I only had about a year and so many months left to serve. I wish I would have said, no, I'd rather just serve out the rest of my time if I can. Although I know that's kind of ridiculous because. I'm just fucking crazy, and you can't have somebody with OCD. I don't even think you can even get in if you have OCD now. I don't think you, you can. I mean, you can't. I, I, don't, I don't think that would have even been a possibility. That is a regret that I have. You struggled through most of your life not knowing what you had. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I know, like I said, in Tampa, I figured out what it was, but you know, it was just that the military, they, they got it. You know what I mean? And it was like, and my brother Matt once said to me, he's like, he's like, yeah, it's like you're being vindicated. Like, you know, now you got some of this, it shows that, you know, you're not just this fuck up. That's like proof. You know what I mean? That, see, I hate this shit when I start like fucking getting emotional and shit like this. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. But but that's the one that's the one thing out of OCD that I regret the fucking most. I mean, even the education, everything is bad. But I'm so patriotic. I always love my country. I just wanted to serve my country honorably, and the fucking OCD took that from me. You know, and that 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 does bother me. You know. But anyway, okay. I wish I could say. Oh, get this. After I got my discharge, I got out. Okay, now I had an OCD attack that forced me out of the Navy. Now after I got out, I was having another OCD attack that would have forced me back in. <laughs> Completely opposite. So if, but I knew what OCD was and I was able to control it. So otherwise, it could have been like I could have ended up staying, because of OCD, I could have ended up staying in for like 20 years. Like, oh, he liked it, but no, OCD would force. It did the opposite. OCD did the absolute opposite. Forced, was forcing me to go back in. So, so OCD is just a, it's a chemical imbalance. In your brain? I guess. I don't know. I, don't, I guess that's what it but is. But you've got it under control now. 
Somewhat, not really, because I'm having an OCD attack right now where I'm talking to you. Is that right? Yeah, because I'm having this OT attack where I wanted to say that thing again where I said I could be in there for like 20 years, you know, and they'd think that, you know, I, uh, I loved it, but it was OCD keeping me. I had to, that was an OCD, so I had to say that. But I don't know why I have to fucking say it. It's not even irrelevant, really. But anyway, you know, that's kind of, well, that is how it would be, though. So you still struggle with it. But it, oh, I still have OCD. It doesn't go away. And, and I would like to say that after that, it was all okay. But no, it wasn't, because after that, I, I slipped into other OCDs. I ended up losing a ton of fucking money. You know, and then I, uh, one day I, uh, I owned a big candy store in Toronto and I fucking didn't make any money. The kids stole more than they bought. And then I had it in Niagara Falls and I moved into a building I owned in Buffalo. And one day a lady came in and she was looking for a clown. And I'd done a few of those things when I owned the, like when I was a male stripper, let me specify that. It's not like a stripper, you're like nudity. There's no nudity or anything like that. You don't know if you remember that when that was the big thing, male strippers, you know, they were like, just you go to like a 50th birthdays and bad, but there's no nudity or anything back then. It was, it was like very, you know, it was like, it was the first time you ever had anything like that. And I also did like singing telegrams. I'd done clown stuff before then, but I was a horrible clown then. I wasn't a professional clown. I just did it if I didn't have anybody else to send out. So I'd, I'd had, I'd, you know, had experience as a performer. Uh, but anyway, Lady Kimberly for a class said, you know, I bet I could do that. You know, she said, yeah, you should do it. I see you with these kids. You're really good with these kids. And so I just put together an old costume I had, and I basically just went and acted like an idiot, and the kids loved me. I put an ad in the yellow pages, and next thing I knew, I was making way more money than I did in that candy store, which I made nothing. And then I was just like, you know, I'm going to move to California. And then I wanted to be, I was thinking I wanted to be an actor, which was also another ridiculous, because I was very, very good as a performer. But that's an impossible thing, too. How am I going to fucking be an actor? I can't even read a script. Like, if, you know what I'm saying? I can memorize. You give me a script, give me an hour or two, I'll memorize the entire fucking thing, and then I'll fucking blow you away. But I can't, like, pick it up and read it like an like audition. I thought, fuck, there's no way I could do this. So I came here. Originally, I was going to be an actor. I was going to be a clown on the side on the weekends while I went to auditions and that. And, but then when I realized, you ain't going to fucking be able to do this. You can't fucking read. So anyway, so anyway, I just became a professional clown. And I got really fucking good at it. And, uh, and I still had many OCD attacks along the journey. I was like, you know, I could, like I said, we'd be here forever. I Man, I can tell you some other shit that'll blow you the fuck away. Some shit that happened to me. I, uh, but anyway, uh, at one point I lost fucking everything again. But then I fucking busted my ass. I've made it all back again now. I've done, I have a history of that in my life. I've made money, then I lost. I made it, then lose. I made it, then lose. But I can't do that anymore because I'm getting too old to fucking do that. But the key thing was I started seeing a psychiatrist. She got me on the proper medication. And since that time, it was like seven years ago, I am now completely, I'm, I'm not, not completely, totally it, but I'm totally, as sane as I've ever been. I've got it back. I'm moving forward. I'm opening the largest clown museum in the world. And, you know, I just go forward from here. You know, I mean, who knows what's going to happen? I don't know, man. I mean, I could wake up one day and the meds don't work and I'm fucked. I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen. Your, your life is better now than it's ever it's been. Fucking, finally, for the, first time, for the first time in my life, I can actually be myself, which is a, which is a good thing, but in some times, senses, it's not. Because a lot of things that, I can, that I'll openly say to people now, OCD would keep me from, like things I might say to my parents now that I wouldn't have said before because OCD would, wouldn't let me say it. Now I'll come out and say it. So there's that side of it too, but I'm, I'm fine for the first time. My acts, this is me, this is how I am, man. This is where I go, I go forward, and uh, things are good now. This is where, you know, this is where I go. Anyway, I guess that's it. That's a hell of a story. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Steve, thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, I know I got long-winded, man. Okay, there, there was something that I left out that's a little important, I just want to add to this. Okay, this, this is what happened with that whole thing with my, the sexual abuse from my stepmother. I made the mistake of, telling my mother about it. And I remember the day I told her, we were talking, my mother was always dogging out my father constantly and my stepmother, of course, why wouldn't she be, she, and I, remember, I was at the table talking with her once I said, I can tell you something Bonnie did once it's really bad. And then right away I knew to myself, don't say it, don't tell her, don't tell her, don't tell her. And she kept prodding and prodding so that I told her. And then she was like crying and upset. But, but anyway, then, then I said, don't you dare tell dad, don't you? Because I didn't want my dad to know. And then she called me like a day later and said, oh, I'm going to tell him. I'm like, don't tell him, don't tell him. I begged her not to tell him. And she, said, and she said she wasn't going to. And then she ended up telling. And she, what she ended up doing, like I said, my father worked for children's services. She goes to children's services and tells them. And then, so anyway, uh, I was lifting weights and my father comes. I tried to avoid my father as much as I could. And then... He said he had to talk to me. I remember a friend of mine was over there, and he left. My friend, when it was waiting for me, I told him. And I, I was so naive. I thought I'd just tell my father. I, was, I can't believe I was thinking. I thought my father would just be like, 
you know, well, it was a long time ago. You know, like, what was I thinking? And I, said, I told him what happened. And my stepmother, I swear, she would have killed me. I swear to God. The way she looked at my eyes, she freaks out. You lying little son of a bitch. And he totally believed her. Didn't believe a word I said. And they basically threw me out of the house. And uh, today, he won't even, even to this day, he won't speak to me. I mean, we had a relationship before that because it kind of, I never brought it up. Nobody ever brought it up. But I recently mailed him a copy of my book. And after that night, that was like three years ago, he will not speak to me at all. To this day, he thinks I lied and made the whole thing up. And I would like to say that my mother would did this, like, cause she, but she basically just did this just another way to get even with him because she never really didn't give a fuck either, I don't think. But he, uh, that was it, man. He just... Uh, he didn't give a fuck. I'm, you know, I'm, and another thing, he's laying this guilt trip on me that, oh, you've jeopardized your job. And now I'm feeling guilty, first of all, because I had sex with his wife. Then I'm also feeling guilty because now I caused all this trouble to his poor wife. I'm feeling guilty that, that, that certain services found out about it when I didn't even say it in the first place. My fucking mother did. So I got double guilt. Anyway, I wanted to get that off my chest. <laughs> fuck it. Anyway, I'm a clown. Everything's good now. Take care. <laughs>